Adcock Ingram began as the E.J. Adcock Pharmacy in Kriegersdorp 120 years ago and was first listed on the JSE in 1950. It became a subsidiary of Tiger Brands before relisting in 2008. Adcock has a market cap of 10.3 billion rand, a price to earnings ratio of 13.3 and a dividend yield of 3.3%. Firstly, how does this one stack up against Aspen? Matthew, it's your territory. Um, well, I think Aspen's a, a more premium company. Um, your long-term outlook for, Asp for Aspen is, in my opinion, better than that for Adcock. Um, but I mean, Adcock's got a lot going for it. It's got a, a very strong set of brands. It's got you know, a developing business in Sub-Sahara. Um, they've had issues over the last uh, 18 months, but I think you know, if they can get those out the base, they, 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 it's still a good company. Adcock Ingram, Jonathan Lowe, how does he stack up mm. against Stephen Saad? Well, as Matthew says, they've had a couple of you know, missteps. The most recent results, they had earnings under pressure. They increased the dividend. I always look when you look at companies that have been around a while. When you can't make head or tail of the results, look what they do with the dividend. Because if they hold the dividend or increase the dividend, it basically means the board thinks that the problems they're currently encountering are of a sort of a temporary nature. Uh, they definitely have many of the same positive attributes. They've got a great portfolio. I mean, some of South Africa's best known OTC brands like, you know, Panado and so on. Over the counter for those that aren't familiar you know, with the Panado costs like some infinitesimal fraction of a cent to manufacture, but they sell them for, uh, you know, a fair price. And Microdol so is still money. the best painkiller <laughs> on the market. <laughs> there you go. So, look, they lost. Look, let's look. Some of the missteps. I still asked you, and you're avoiding the question, how does Jonathan Lowe well, as MD you can only really be measured Stack on your record. Steven. And Stephen has just, and Gus have really just sort of done everything right, whereas Jonathan at the helm has been involved with a few strategic missteps, the conversation with Sipla India, which kind of started and then was stillborn, the withdrawal of those DPP stuff, you know, like Viox from the market wasn't their fault, but it was part of their portfolio. Uh, you know, so all of those things, the failure to get a significant part of the ARB tender, so those are things that you've got to say, well, they didn't get them right, so that's why the share price, as you can see, has stagnated. Is he being fair? Uh, I'm not entirely sure that's fair. I mean, there's a lot of legacy issues within Adcock. Um, you know, they're certainly under underspent in the Tiger Brand stable on the capex and the pipeline. So you know, they've been doing decently with what with the, with the hand they've been dealt. And you know, I think in time, as they sort of get these legacy legacy issues under control. Um, it can start you know, being a bit more of a compelling case. Mm. All right, so, so let's look at the, the share price graph. And, and as Paul points out, it differs from the nice steep curve we saw on mm. the Aspen side. Have we plateaued at this level? What are we, around about 63 Rand? On, Not on necessarily. I mean, I think things can start going well for them. A big push for them is in the non-regulated uh, nutraceuticals. So they bought that company called Neutral Leader for 300 million rand. The intention there is to get into stuff which the Medicines Control Council doesn't. The vitamin the arena. Yes, exactly. The stuff that you can sell for big numbers. It doesn't actually do anything for you, but you know, it's all very well and it's good margins. The reason is the MCC doesn't control that. You know, the Medicines Control Council is like a semi-dysfunctional state organization in this country that must approve everything. Even though it's been approved in all the other countries, they must have a look first. So I don't know. I mean, I think they do have a powerful position. What they've got to do is recapture the market's imagination as a growth stock because companies that deliver sequential earnings increases in an industry with good fundamentals get high positive PE ratios. The vitamin strategy, is it uh, a well, good I mean, move in your book? It's, it's, it's good for everyone. I mean, all the multinas can come in here and just get into the vitamin and minerals category. So it's very There's no moat in Yeah, I know the barriers to entry are very low because oh, there's no MCC or well, MCC equivalent. Um, so, you my know, I might go set up a, a vitamin company. It sounds <laughs> like a good, good opportunity. Uh, no barriers difficult to entry. Business, but, uh, well, it's, that's why it's such a capital. difficult it's a difficult business to operate because anyone can really do it. All right, so are we going to hot or not on Adcock Ingram? Paul, first. Mm, I'm quite tempted because, uh, as I say, I love the sector, but I'm going to go with not hot, just on the basis that they've had very choppy recent uh, results. Matthew, hot or not? I'm uh, not hot as well. It's very poor earnings quality at the moment, and it's been a difficult, very difficult year, and I can't really see uh, end in sight, at least from a margin perspective.